طلابنا الاعزاء اليوم نكمل محاضره لتخص العماره الرومانيه واللي سبق ان بدانا بها في محاضرات سابقه ونكمل تناول examples of public buildings اول المباني هي الباسيليكاز او الباسيليكات Basilicas, which were halls of justice and commercial exchange, indicate clearly by their central position the importance of law and business in old Rome. Then, basilicat هي مباني مهمة وهي مباني كانت تستخدم كدور للعدالة تجري فيها المسائل القضاء وأيضا للتبادل التجاري. وبذلك هي تعبر عن أهمية القانون وأهمية الأعمال التجارية في روما القديمة. These buildings, which are of a pronounced type, are the link between classical and Christian architecture. طبعاً تعتبر كنمط مباني الباسيليكات تعتبر حلقة وصل ما بين العمارة المسيحية المبكرة. والعصور القديمة أو العمارة الكلاسيكية اللي هي متمثلة سبق وأن ذكرنا هذا بالعمارة الإغريقية والعمارة الرومانية وهذا طبعا بالنسبة للعمارة الأوروبية عموما The usual plan of a basilica was a rectangle twice as long as its width either two or four rows of columns forming a nave and two or four easels around the whole length. And there were sometimes galleries over the, the easels. The roof was generally of wood, which the, knowledge, the Roman knowledge of the principle of roof trusses permitted them to use over very large uh, spans. Even نتعرف على المخطط العام لأي باسيليكا typical plan of a باسيليكا we can remark here at the center this, the space here is called the navy and it is uh, bounded by two aisles which run along its length at the end of the uh, uh, the long rib, we can see the apes or more than one apes. They are usually uh, roofed by wooden structure, as you can see here in the section. And here the principle of a triangulation allowed to use uh, uh, wide spans for the roofing. Also this Roofing is supported by buttresses, as we have uh, cleared uh, in previous lecture uh, about the systems of buttressing in Roman architecture. Here, this is a uh, visualization of the Basilica of Constantine, which we uh, saw in the previous slide in plans and sections. Here, this is remains in Rome we can see uh, remains of the Basilica of Caesar and we can see here two rows of columns which indicate two uh, aisles on each side of the Basilica. Usually these Basilicas are uh, uh, built around the Forum and they take a central position in, the city, in Roman cities here we have an example, Basilica Emilia. This is uh, the basilicas around the Roman Forum in Rome, sorry. Basilica Julia and other basilicas here, Basilica of Maximus. So, the other building type is the thermi. The thermi, or else uh, called uh, palatial public baths, the, so they are public baths of Imperial Rome. They were not only designed for luxurious bathing, but they were resorted to for news and gossip and served like a modern club as a rendezvous of social life, besides being used for lectures and athletic sports. So many 
things or many activities are happening or used to happen in a thermite. It is a place, it's like a modern club. Besides a place for bathing and luxurious bathing, not uh, an ordinary bathing, um, rendezvous could be held in, in this building. Lectures could be given and athletic sports as well. And indeed enter, entered largely into the daily life of the imperial city. So they were very in, uh, engaged buildings with uh, daily life of the Romans. The thermi were raised on a high platform within an enclosing wall and underneath were the furnaces and rooms connected with the services of the establishment which usually consisted of three main parts so any thermi should consist of three main parts as shown in the uh, thermi of Caracalla and Dialoxian so the first part is the main building as we can see here in the plan, there is the main building. The main building was a dominant, it has a dominant central hall about which all other rooms were symmetrically, in, uh, symm symmetrically arranged, having on its cross axis three chief apartments. Let's have a look at this central hall and at its axis, it has three main apartments. So, <clears throat> the tepidarium, or what is called the warm room, this is the tepidarium, through which we can reach the other room, which is called the calidarium, or the hot room, each with heated water baths. On the other side, there was the frigidarium, which contained an unheated swimming bath. So, the real bath happens here in the tepidarium and the calidarium. First, we enter into a, hot, a warm room, then we go further to the hot room, which is called the calidarium. On the other side, this is the frigidarium, which is a usual a uh, swimming bath for usual bathing or swimming. The second, the second uh, component of this uh, of the thermite is this large open space which is around the building. It was like a park enclosure surrounding the central structure or the central building. This Center, this uh, open area is, uh, was usually planted with, uh, planted with trees and ornamented with statues and fountains. Finally, we have the outer ring of the apartments. These included lecture rooms and exedrays for philosophers, poets and statesmen. While also we can uh, have colonnades uh, a feature of all open spaces in Ro Rome and these colonnades served as a protection from the sun. So we can see that this surrounding part is not merely a wall but it is a complex of other, um, other spaces like uh, lecture halls, exadrays, here we can see the exadray and also we can see the, those used to be shops which, uh, which are uh, uh, with, engaged with the outside street. Here are some uh, a photo of uh, remains of a bath in Rome and here also the thermi of Diocletian Rome in Rome also. This is another uh, example of thermi. Here we can see the uh, central hall, the frigidarium in number four, and the tepidarium, and lastly the calidarium. All other spaces are uh, arranged symmetrically around this main axis. And we can see, uh, see that the entrance 
to this uh, building are not directly to this uh, central hall. Here we have entrances and from the other side we have other entrances and then you can enter to the central hall and then on 90 degree axis you can uh, have the bathing uh, spaces. This is from the inside, thermi, a central hall of a thermi from the inside. And this is also another photo. The third type of buildings or public buildings in Rome, uh, theaters. And we previously have known the theaters of the Greeks. Roman theaters were often adapted from the Greek to suit the Roman drama. And for this, the auditorium with its tires of seats, one above the other, was restricted to a semicircular. The central area at the ground level, which in Greek theaters was occupied by the chorus, it became part of the auditorium and was assigned to senators and other dignitaries. So here the chorus, which, was, uh, the which is the central area, the semicircular central area, and which we saw, uh, which was used uh, for the chorus in Greek uh, uh, times. Here the Romans used it as a place for the VIPs, the senators and the dignitaries. The stage incre increased in importance, as we can see here, and was raised and brought into intermediate connection with the auditorium. Roman theaters were not only hollowed out of a hillside, but they were also built up by means of concrete vaulting. So the auditorium was not necessarily part of a slope of a hillside, but it, uh, in Roman times it was built over a series of vaulting. So these vaults supported the tires of seats under which uh, were the connecting corridors used for retreat in case of sudden showers. So if any rain comes about, in time of the uh, activity, all people would go uh, into these uh, corridors which are under the seats and which were uh, vaulted and uh, open to the air, but they uh, provided protection from the uh, rain. <coughs> Here we can see uh, a theater, an example uh, of theater. I think this is a model made for a Roman theater. All these are open corridors vaulted to support the tires of seats. And here we can see the proscenium which uh, were, was used for the uh, changing of the scenes and for the uh, um, customs of the uh, actors. So uh, Roman theaters, here we can see that uh, this auditorium uh, was partly carved into the hill or hollow, hollowed into the hill and the uh, upper parts were built uh, using the vaulting as we explained before. So now another um, type of building, the amphitheaters. Amphitheaters were unknown to the Greeks. They are characteristically Roman buildings found in every important settlement and are good exponent, exponents of the character and life of the Romans who preferred display of mortal, mortal combat. So this building, this kind of building, the amphitheater, <coughs> it was used for displaying mortal combat. So it was not a theater for drama, it was for mortal combat. The elliptical amphitheater with its rising tires of seats may be regarded as a compound of two theaters. We can think of this building as two uh, amphitheaters, a compound together, stage to stage. 
thus making a continuous auditorium. So this photo is of uh, the Colosseum. The Colosseum is the amphitheater of Rome. The amphitheater, which is which uh, uh, remain, which its uh, remains are still standing in uh, old Rome. Thus, uh, the so the continuous auditorium uh, surrounded the central arena. In addition to their normal purpose. These amphitheaters were also used to, for naval exhibitions and water pipes for flooding. Uh, some the, of the arena still exist. So under the arena, there were pipes for, uh, used for flooding this arena with water. And then the amphitheater was uh, sometimes used for uh, naval exhibitions. So it's not only for mortal combat, but also for making uh, exhibitions uh, occasionally. Here, this is also a photo of the Colosseum, which is the amphitheater of Rome. It is a majestic structure, very, um, very powerful and uh, influencing. Another type of building is the circuses. The Roman circuses were for horse and chariot racing. It was derived from the Greek, the Greek sorry, hippodrome and attained great magnificence. For foot racing and athletic games, there was the stadium, which uh, we saw in uh, Greek architecture. It was based upon the Greek stadium usually included with the amenities of the thermi rather than appearing as a separate building. So, uh, the circus is for chariot racing and horse racing, while the stadium, which we saw also in Greek uh, uh, architecture, was used for uh, foot racing. This is an um, imaginable photo for horse, uh, or sorry, chariot racing in old uh, Rome. Finally, uh, we'll have a look at Roman houses. Roman dwelling houses are aware of three types. The domus, which was uh, the private house, and the villa, which was the country house, and the insulae or multi-storied tenements which were used for, as for apartment uh, buildings. The domus or the private house combined features of the old Italic or Etruscan uh, dwelling with other elements derived about uh, the second century BC from the Greek house. The atrium for formed the more public portion of the building and beyond was the peristyle which is uh, of a Greek origin, the center and it was the center for the family apartment. Here we can uh, notice these, uh, the two major uh, parts of the Roman domus, the Roman house. Um, by the entrance we can enter to the atrium. The atrium is we can uh, uh, consider it as the public space in a Roman house. It is derived from Etruscan origin. It is an open space, but the uh, open area to the sky is only uh, this area that we can see here in the section. All around this fountain, uh, you have a, a, a roofed uh, arcade or roofed uh, space so that the rain would go down into this fountain collected in the fountain so this is the public part here we can see a reception room and uh, other uh, other rooms then we can go to the private part of the Roman domus, which is called a peristyle. And it is called so because of the uh, uh, arcades, colonnades uh, surrounding this open area. This area is uh, considered a more private area. And some, uh, some domus 
or some uh, houses uh, enjoyed uh, gardens right behind the uh, open, uh, right behind the peristyle. This plan is the house of Pansa, found in Pompeii, and uh, it is a good example for a Roman house. This is a, a visualization of the atrium, and here we can see that uh, the only open area or only uh, part open to the sky is the part which is above this fountain which was used for collecting rain. We can see that these houses were ornamented from the inside with uh, colored uh, drawings or colored frescoes and also uh, engaged columns may be made of uh, gypsum or other material. This is the insule, which is a multi-story uh, apartment building in Old Rome. It was used for public uh, uh, poor uh, class of the Roman society. It may have some shops engaged with the street of the uh, city. Uh, as example for the villas, which as we said was the country house, the Villa Hadrian is a great example for this uh, uh, type of housing. It is um, it is a very complex uh, uh, or compound of buildings. It has a um, bathing area. Here we can see a swimming pool. Here we can see a stadium and so many uh, other uh, magnificent gardens with fountains. Very interesting to visit. This is a model. and some of the uh, main areas uh, as displayed in the photos. And this is also some example of uh, drawings of Risco. So here we, with this slide we end the, uh, our uh, lecture today. Uh, I hope you can uh, find and follow uh, this lecture on the YouTube as I will give you the link. And if you have any questions, you can uh, connect with me on our uh, uh, website. Thank you.